Mikey Pipes, today is Friday. Oh, Friday what? October 8th, 2021. I am in the Rockaways. Right now I am in Far Rockaway, and we're heading to a service call in Arburn. Gentleman's got a AO Smith BTH, I think 150. It's leaking, she's brand new. Let's go see what's going on. Make sure you thumbs up the video. Check us out on Discord and WhatsApp. Links in the description box down below. All right, let's get going. And since I know some of you guys like the scenic route, I figured I'll feed you some footage of the Rockaways. There's the Rockway right there. Little parkway right there. We're gonna go under that old train trestle and fly. Rockaways. See, if this Jeep and this Infinity move, we could fly. We could fly down this little parkway, freeway, whatever you want to call it, and make every single light. But you got to do like 60. The ocean's right over there. We're on the other side of the train tracks. The other side of the train tracks. Heading over to Arvern. As I was saying, the customer's got an A.O. Smith BTH. See, it didn't make the light. See, it just turned. See, idiot. This light's gonna turn green. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Why can't people drive with a purpose, man? Why can't people drive with a purpose? Finally, leave that guy in the dust. I think this Infinity's gonna move with a purpose. Even though the speed limit's 25, no one really does the speed limit. We're at, welcome to New York. Most people, we drive like New York City taxi cab drivers, and we move with a purpose. But this guy right here is not moving with a purpose. He's putzing around. And see, we're gonna not make that green light right there because he's putzing around. He's a putzer. It's 0.1 miles. Turn right. Oh, man. There's Arvern by the sea over there. You have million plus dollar top floor penthouses up there. Up there, see that? good stuff and then you have the other side of the tracks see what we're working with wealth less wealth all right we're almost there all right got some more footage here right now we're on beach channel drive and beach 65th we're gonna head on down to amstel by the way back to blue blue lives matter blue lives matter all lives matter, actually. I got the halal pizza and chicken, R&R, gourmet deli. The other side of the tracks, no joke. You look down there, other side of those train tracks, you've got houses there, these townhouses, 750 and above. Brand new construction. All right, we're almost at our destination. Let's get some footage. Hope I fed you guys some amazing content. That's my job. That's my job to feed you because I know you're hungry. All right, you're gonna go down to Amstel right now, all right? All right, stay tuned. All right, A.O. Smith Cyclone. We have a BTH 150 300. There's a serial number. And build date of December 26, 2019. Now, this building is under construction, recently completed, and according to the client, the water heater was never in use. Here is our four inch central therm exhaust piping. At the bottom of the central therm, we have a condensate neutralizer, which is not going anywhere. It's probably gonna go to the floor drain. Client noticed the rust marks here. Obviously the tank was pressurized. There's our inlet, which is one inch, which is then sized up to the inch and a quarter tapping. Let's take a look on top. It's a handy dandy bucket. And here we go. So, we have multiple failure points here, rust, corrosion, but 
why they sized down to half inches. Kind of amazing. Fresh air intake, three inch PVC up to the roof. Gas piping is also a concern. I see three quarter coming into here, which then is bushed down pressure switch to the half inch tapping on the gas valve. I'm curious is to see how long of three quarter this is. We should investigate that. Let's go see. I want to follow the gas pipe, which is there. Okay. And then it goes to here, stops along the way and it's three quarter. Okay. Gas meter's outside. All right, we're gonna fire this thing up and see what happens. Set the breakers off. But we shall see. Gas is on to the building? Yes. Yeah, it's on. I'm, I'm here, sorry. No problem, man. I, I caught you uh, multitasking, I'm sure. Yeah, like and I'm still on site, on so. That. Oh, you are killer. That's even, even better, okay? So, question. Obviously, that here is beyond repair. Correct. But what I, what I need to know is where did that water come from? Is it, is it water? Do I see some signs of water coming down the pipe or maybe kind of Is there anything we're looking above it? I'm, I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing to, I got to wager, I guess, my professional opinion. You know, the plumber installed this, this heater and pressurized it, but never turned it on. So filled it with water. Yeah. Never turned it on, and it sat here, you know, for, you know, a year, a little over a year, whatever. You know, his proof of purchase shows December of 2019, but it shows it was delivered in April of 2020, and he say it was installed in May of 2020, but again, it's beyond that first year, but I'm willing to wager that, again, it was not, it was never fired up, and condensation, or just maybe just a small seal leak, maybe one of that elements is the cause. And hence, but you think it's coming from the tank. It's not coming from the environment around. No, you. correct. There's nothing external that uh, would that yeah. that I see here at this point. Uh, they, they, yeah, I may shed some light on something. Do they have a thermal expansion tank installed? On no. The water inlet side there. Nope. Or they, you, they, you gonna tell them they gotta have. One, Understood. Right? <laughs> or I will, I will tell them that. Hey, do me a favor. Uh, is the heater enabled or disabled? Right now, it's enabled. Uh, Yep, screens lit up and um, Okay, menu. You got it. Alright, one second. Oh, hold on. And do that. Hold on one second. Let's try to balance you. <laughs> Alright, heater information. So what's your last time? Thirty-six days, five hours. Yeah, a lapse time. Burner time is two hours, 19 minutes. So not only did he charge it, he didn't actually have power to it until 36 days ago. Correct. Right. So, you know, and that, you know, if they hadn't changed the 
control board. Now, if they changed the control board, that would wipe that, uh, wipe that out. Do you know if anybody did any work on it? No. Okay. Yeah, because I wouldn't have put any work on that one if I was looking at the top of it. But in your professional opinion, you're not seeing anything in fire. Right? Was, no, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm, in a, I'm in a closet, you know, with, you know, clean ceilings, walls. You know, tile floor. You know, it's it's a it's a utility closet, maintenance closet, and this and the only thing in here is the water heater. Yeah, I always want to see concrete factory. I wonder if I'm kind of out where they're washing out the concrete trucks. No, so they haven't they haven't they they haven't set up shop yet. Basically, they've just built the building, and it looks brand new. The building, and you know, there's you know nothing like that here. In the closet. Uh, no sign. Uh, water in the kitchen. Uh, and I guess we could probably go right. up, up this ladder just to make sure. Nothing external. No, and everything. Yeah, goes. make sure, like, the, you know, I always look and make sure if they're going out the roof, they. They didn't forget the flash, and it's been raining down. Like, yeah, no, up, everything up, is everything's pretty clean. Like, there's, there's a there's a, there's a uh, ladder going up to uh, the rooftop. I mean, the the, okay. the roof above this closet because this is a fairly large warehouse right now, about thirty something feet tall. But yeah. I'm on a second floor walk up into this closet, and nothing external. Oh man, there you go. the change out on that's going to be. Uh, I know, and you know, the good thing you, know you mentioned. It's a good thing you mentioned the expansion tank because right now it is firing right now. My tank temperature is 107 degrees. My set point is 120 and my, and my relief valve is discharging. My relief valve is discharging. Can you, that, sir, can you kill the breaker? Well, you know what, that problem, yeah. Yeah, he needs an expansion tank. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Well, also, if I saw the TMP discharge that quick, I'd make sure that the water pressure coming in not above 80 PSI that they don't need a... The reducing the valve, correct. Another observation, the, 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 the uh, hot water outlet, you know, is half inch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, and that is wrong. Okay? Correct. So, I know. That will have to be changed as well. Yeah, yeah I'm I I aware of that. that too, and I was wondering if my eye was uh, failing me uh, on, <laughs> on the side. Okay. Uh, All right, so I know, I know what needs to be done. I appreciate your time. Right, and yeah, and I'm going to give you an authorization number for replacement. Okay. It is still, if, it, if you're telling me it's leaking, you know, even with with what that, I'm going to tell them to correct that with an expansion tank installed. Right yeah, size pipe, water piping. Be nice today. Right, do the water piping, make sure the returns, you know, uh, on there. Are they running a research on it or? No. no? All right, so no recirculation. Okay, uh, you know, I could be, uh, you know what, say no just on the expansion tank and the half inch pipe, but not. He's gonna make corrections. Well, we're gonna do the job and he's gonna make corrections and we're gonna make sure it gets done. You know, exactly. You gotta turn it off. <laughs> yes, before it, before it blows up. <laughs> Exactly. That's why I'm not staying in the room. <laughs> it finally turned off, and that, that relief valve is discharging. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like even like he has a neutralizer on the bottom of the uh, exhaust tee coming up, coming out of the bottom of, of the water heater, and it's not not going anywhere. It's just a neutralizer sitting on the floor, which is piping coming out of it. It's not going anywhere. So it's like. It's plastic, yeah. Plastic going to the neutralizer. <laughs> yeah, it does me as well. <laughs> I, I as well. I like to learn something new every single day. So the way I have to do it is I have to take the total water in gallons. And this is where you need the design engineer because that includes the amount in the hot water pipe. And there's nobody in there that's going to tell you how much is in the hot water pipe, okay? Correct. But uh, you got a 100-gallon tank, right? So let's just call that 100 gallons. All right. Now I'm going to assume something, and I do not want you to assume. Okay? Never assume. So the next question is, what is the incoming water pressure? 
right? And like I, I usually will use a default of 60 PSI. I bet you're going to be closer to 80. It can't be above 80 unless they have a PRB. But just for this, I'm going to put 60 in just as a gauge. Or if you want to, we'll go to 80. Uh, that way it'll give us a higher factor. Okay. Okay. And then I need another question for you. What's your outlet set point temperature so I can get an idea how much we're going to expand it? Are they running it at 120, 140, 160, 180? 120. You're operating? Yeah, I'm, I want to confirm that right now. Sir? Yeah. Sir? Where's the boss, man? Outside? All right. Because that's a good number. Because I don't know what temperature for cement they're going to need. So let's see. Let me find him. Bear with me. I'm sorry. Knowledge is power. What's your operating temperature for the water heater? No, I couldn't tell you right now. That I need to know. Uh... How fast can you find out? Is it going to be no, 120? I can, I can, I can Is it 160? I would say about 140. 140 degrees. 140 degrees, Mr. A.O. Smith. All right, good. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when I run that, okay, this is what it tells me. The total volume of the tank at least has to be a five gallon. But with an 80 charge on it, the acceptance volume, which is what you really are looking at, how much it'll hold with the bladder charge to 80, well, it has to be a gallon and a half. Okay, okay. So okay. Five, I wouldn't call a five gallon undersized on that particular job Understood. by doing the math. There's a great little formula on that that uh, I got it years ago, man. You can download it off the, and, and it asks you that and it gives you all of that. Oh, perfect. Sam Charles got one on their site as well. So if, if you want to copy it, I forgot where I've got mine. I've had it so long. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to Am Charles uh, website yeah, and look yeah. it up and find it. Yeah. And, that way, you'll get closer to your real sizing. Perfect. You're probably going to be closer to being undersized. And that way, you're not using 10% of the stored water, right? Which would have told you you needed a 10 gallon tank. Correct. Okay. Uh, on there, which will, you know, help you, you know, save your customers some money and also get you closer to, to being your size. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and authorize the replacement. That's funny. See, see. You know, I have a YouTube channel, and people call me Saint Mike because I save people's lives sometimes. Oh, but, well, there it is. So the bad news is you're paying me my hour of labor, and that's the bad news. The good news is A.O. Smith gave us an authorization number, which is your number now. You own the number uh, for tank replacement. Now, I know you got it from Ferguson, whenever you bought it from. Yeah. Uh, it's easier if you deal with this than us. And I'll, I'll break down our charges according to install the property, because there are changes you have to make. Number one, the, and I forgot about the neutralizer, but number one, you must ha install an expansion tank on the domestic cold water pipe that's sized for the, the new tank and pressure of the building and temperature of the store of the tank itself. That's why I wanted to know like what's the PSI of the building, which we could find out, but normally, and you know, the plumbing engineer has all this information. Yeah. So if you if your, if your set point temperature is 140, I need to know that. If the incoming water pressure is 80 PSI or greater, we need to install a pressure reducing valve. We also need to do the, the, um, the half inch piping has to go up to inch and a quarter. Yeah. And as much as we could possibly change. So that, that's an unknown variable, how far, how much piping we can actually change, which is accessible. Because above the water heater, we only have like three or four feet before it goes into the ceiling. Yeah. But I need to increase that as much as possible. Okay. And as far as possible. And that's an unknown. That could be a thousand dollars. It could be several thousands of dollars. So, and you can't use PEX here. You have to use copper. It's in New York City, and it's commercial building, yeah. industrial building. So we have expansion tank, possibly a pressure reducing valve installation, upgrading domestic uh, hot water outlet piping, with deal the neutralizer, which is that thing that's sitting on the floor, yeah. and then you have installation. But so the bad the good, bad news is you're paying me three hundred bucks and change under three hundred dollars. Good news is you have to buy a ten thousand dollar water heater and wait for the Ferguson to do the paperwork. You have to buy the one. That's how it works. You buy the water heater. They put in the. They put they submit all the paperwork. You'll pay for delivery and all that other stuff, stuff tax and warranty ship charges and things like that. Maybe if several hundreds of dollars there. But you are getting a new order. Okay. 
You're welcome. I gotta say, I am impressed with A.O. Smith. Not only was that gentleman knowledgeable, gave us a little bit of an education on expansion tank sizing. Again, I don't normally deal with commercial units like that. It's good to know. But he was able to bless the guy with a tank replacement authorization number. Now, he still have to spend thousands of dollars to actually do the replacement with modifications, but A.O. Smith did the right thing, and thumbs up to A.O. Smith. And that's why Pipe Doctor, my company, is a one of three in the New York metropolitan area. Well, one of three A.O. Smith factory warranty service providers. And what that means is if you have an A.O. Smith product, commercial or residential, and it's under one year of age, A.O. Smith pays us a stipend, basically. And we get little perks here and there, but also we get, we get tons of referral volume from them as well. Like, the only reason why we went to this job is because A.O. Smith said, listen, you got a co-pipe doctor because they know what the hell they're doing. I'm like, that's right. It's me. All right. Hope everyone enjoyed this video. Some little different than normal. If you got something out of it, smash that thumbs up button and let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. All right. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.